Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. That's right, just like a torque spec on a crank bolt. <laughs> everybody knows you just hammer that thing down until the gun stops. That's probably good enough. <laughs> Today, we're talking about Ethernet cables, specifically RJ45 connections. How is that done? This can be a little troublesome if you've never done it before. I know you could probably go to the store and get your own cable, but hey, it's so much more cost effective and honestly, it's easier to buy a spool of this stuff and the little connectors and make your own wire. So let's go ahead and look at how this is done and I think you're gonna be surprised at how easy it is. Let's take a look. Well, right off the bat here, I've made myself a little kit to do this exact job over the years. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. First things first, this is an RJ45 crimp tool. This is an absolute must have. And if you attempt to do this, you're gonna need one of these. I'm gonna go ahead and link all this stuff down in the description below so you can get this stuff for yourself. But let's take a look at what else is in here. This guy right here is called a punch down tool. So for certain ethernet connections, you're gonna need to actually push the wire into the terminal in the connection, and you're gonna need one of these things. This is kind of like a torque wrench for ethernet connections. There's a loaded spring inside of here that's set to a specific tension that you're actually able to change the depth and tension of that spring. So whenever you push the wire down with this end here, it'll actually snap into that fitting so you know that it's perfect. Here we have a Klein Tool Ethernet wire tester. So this thing has a remote that pops out of the bottom. You can plug it into one side of your cable and plug the other end of your cable into here, push the button and it will tell you whether you did it correctly or not. And whenever you have a run that's hundreds of feet long and you can't afford to have this thing wrong, a tool like this is an absolute must have so you know that you did it correctly. Digging down in here further, just got a couple Sharpies so you can keep track of what you're doing. And here, I have a couple cheat sheets that I printed out. In case you didn't know, RJ45 has two very distinct industry standard ways to wire this plug. There is a A and a B. Most commonly, you would run into the B, but I have run into both. So it's just good to have both of these at hand so you know which way to wire these plugs. And the last thing I got in here is a really good set of flush cut dikes. So whenever you're finished with your terminals, you can cut the access wire off the end of this plug really nice and clean, and it's a good, clean install. So let's go ahead and put one together so you guys can see what it's all about. So let's go ahead and take our length of wire here. This is specifically Cat 6 Ethernet wire. There is Cat 5, but that stuff is really early 2000s. It doesn't support today's high-speed internet. So if you're gonna be doing this, I strongly suggest that you get Cat 6. First things first, we need to strip the jacket off of this conductor. And if you look here, there is a fancy little concave place that that size of that hole is perfect for the outer jacket of this conductor. We're gonna go ahead and put this in here and stick a length out the end. It doesn't matter at this point. This is like Bob Ross, there is no wrong here. So go ahead, put it in the tool, run it around a couple times and let that razor do its job. We're gonna strip the outer insulator off of this stuff and look at that, that comes off absolutely perfect. And keep this thing. This may be junk later, but right now you're gonna need this. This will actually be a valuable tool later on. So once you have your insulation cut off, go ahead and pull out all the wires to make this easier to work with. And this insulator thing here in the center, just cut that off. We don't need that anymore. But be careful that you don't cut the wires that matter. Now once you have these all pulled apart, take that piece of insulation that you cut off earlier and use that to unwind all of these little twisted pairs. Because this can be a little tricky if you're just doing it with your fingers. But this little trick here, look how snazzy that is. That makes this so easy to unwind these things. So once you get all of these unwound, 
you're going to need to straighten these out so it's easier to put into the plug. Let's do some movie magic here. Now, once you have all of your wires untwisted and straightened out, see, that's another good reason for the sharpening here. I use that to straighten out all the kinks in these wires. It's super handy. Now, like I said before, there are two different ways to wire an RJ, RJ45 plug. And the most standard one is this T568B. B is the one that you want. This is the one that you're going to run into most often. And this is the color code that you need to match inside of that termination. So let's go ahead and line all of these conductors up to match this orientation. So once you have your wires lined up all nice and straight, all straightened out, and you have everything in the correct orientation here, all of your wires have to be in the order that this is, or this will not work. Go ahead and straighten these out, keep them nice and together, wiggle them back and forth, bend them so they're all good and straight. Then you take your RJ45 connector, and if you look here, it tells you left to right, and then this is the top of the plug with a little clip on the bottom so you know which way the plug goes on here. So you take the plug with the clip on the bottom, just like it shows in the picture, and you shove all of the wires that you just straightened out into the end of this plug. Now this can be the tricky part. Trying to get everything in here perfectly straight can be difficult, but it's not terrible. I promise you that this works. So once you have your wires pushed through the connector here, you're going to see that they come right through the end and that lets you confirm that you have everything in the correct orientation against the diagram. So go ahead and push this whole thing into the end of the plug until the insulation is well inside the connector so you know everything is done correctly. Now's the fun part. We crimp this and make it permanent. So once again, once you've confirmed that your wiring is correct, we're ready to crimp. So go ahead and install this into the tool. It even says RJ45. This is the port that you want to do this crimp. Insert the whole connector into the end of the tool here and it indexes perfectly into that tool. It even has a little notch for the clip. Once everything's in there firm and secure, go ahead and give her a squeeze. I squeeze it three times just to make sure and that's it. We are almost totally done here. The crimp is good. You see how this little plastic piece crimps down onto the jacket so it makes this a firm connection. Not only that, it pushes all these little brass teeth individually into the wires. That's how this indexes into the outlet in your wall and terminates all these wires to these pins. So once you're done with the crimp portion, Go ahead and take your flush cut diagonals here right on the end of the connector and cut off all your spare wire. That leaves us with a super clean, nice, finished connection. Now you simply just do that exact same thing to the other end of the wire. Who knows, this might be six miles away from you or it might be a couple feet like this one but go ahead and do that exact same thing to the other one, and then we're gonna test it and make sure that we did our work correctly. Now, once you have both ends of your wire terminated, let's go ahead and test this to make sure everything's good. So you take the remote part of the tester here, clip it into one end. That satisfying little click lets you know that it's home. Take the base module of the tester here, plug in the other end. Now we go ahead and hit the test button. Check that out. We got a green light on RJ45. So we know that this is wired correctly, that everything is the same on both sides and it is in the correct orientation. If you had something incorrect, it would tell you here on the tester whether you had the wires in the wrong spot, whether you just had something not connected properly, or if two wires were touching together or something was incorrect inside of that plug. This thing would tell you so you could fix it now before you continue doing all this stuff and have to troubleshoot later and have a heck of a time finding it. Now, once again, this is probably the most important part of this entire thing is following this diagram properly. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on the screen here for a second. So if you need to reference it, 
Go ahead and screenshot this, pause this, whatever you need. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to link these down in the description as well as a tool list. Well guys, that's honestly about it. A lot of people are shy of this particular procedure because it seems like it's really involved. But honestly, it's not. You saw it only took a couple minutes. And as long as you do it correctly, take your time, follow the diagram, wire these connectors properly, and invest a little bit of money in the proper tools to do this job correctly. And if you guys are into this kind of stuff, it's obvious that you're tool junkies like I am. So do you really need an excuse to go buy a special crimping tool? And believe me, once you have this stuff, you'll find yourself doing it for everything. You know, why use Wi-Fi from your computer to your router sitting right next to it? Get a spool of ethernet wire and make your own. It will make everything so much easier because let's be honest, hardwired connections are significantly better than Wi-Fi. So this little thing has helped me out. I mean, I've done this for security cameras, I've done this for routers, I've done this for different areas of the house that I needed to get reliable internet to. Even at work, I have runs of this that are several hundred feet long going to different components here in the plant. And this is a valuable thing to know how to do. So if you guys are interested in stuff like this, go ahead and leave a comment and we can dive deeper. Until next time.